Well, hello everybody, and it's nice to be with you again. We are going to look at Saxe Huama, and lately I've been reading a lot of Eric von Daniken because it's quite interesting, quite fun. I've read his Return to the Stars and also his Pathways to the Gods, and he actually says that the fortress above Saxe Huama, the mountain above Saxe Huama, is more impressive than the walls of Saxe Huama themselves, which are the things that everyone is really interested in. And he says that it's all a bit weird up there because it looks like it's all melted together. It's all, it all looks like some melted city or something. He also even, he, he even says that it looks like lots of the stuff looks like it came straight out of the mold. So even though geopolymer wasn't invented yet back in the 70s, he, he's talking about it as if it's all been molded. And we have to ask, what's caused the vitrification? Was it lightning strikes? I don't think it was. I'll explain why in a moment. Was it ancient thermonuclear weapons? Maybe. The fact is, we don't really know, and we don't have much way of finding out. If we look at this, this is unbelievable. This is Saxe Huaman from the sky. And we see a lot of new stuff here. Apparently, this is a calendar. Now, I'm not too sure that it is a calendar. Apparently, the Spanish totally looted this site and used it to build Cuzco. And I think that's why Cuzco has so much Inca-style architecture, even though, you know, it's sort of ancient pre-Inca architecture in modern streets. So I think the rocks must have been numbered and then transported in exactly the same way because if they weren't numbered and then transported they, that would have defeated the purpose of transporting them why why not rearrange them in Cuzco as they were here on the site so the stuff we see in Cuzco actually wouldn't be original it would be from here and this fortress is just uh, amazing. It's almost like a star fortress, but a bit different. That stuff is a lot newer. I'm not sure what's going on there. And we have at least three sets of huge walls. This is just unbelievable what they've done here. But here's the thing. If it was lightning strikes that, that has vitrified the top of the, the mountain, well, why wasn't the lightning attracted to these higher mountains over here instead? Or even where this cameraman is standing, which is called the Inca Throne, which we'll look at in a moment. And this is the Inca Throne, you've probably seen this before. It's on top of a high mountain overlooking Saxe Huaman. And if you look at the this stone here, this is the vitrification that people talk about. Do you see that gloss? Now here there's less of it. Here there is some vitrification, so there's there is stuff going on, and we don't know what's caused it. Was it lightning? Was it ancient weaponry? Was it a type of glaze? It's all a bit weird. And if we look at fortress construction, in the Middle Ages they did like to have these round towers, and the reason was they were stronger than the, than the corners of square towers. People could go up to the corners, and, and apparently they were weaker. People could bash holes in them easier than they could with round towers. But with the invention of artillery, people trying to bash a hole in the wall could easily be obliterated. And there was no more need for round towers, because the round towers created this dead zone. So what happened was, if you were over here on the fortress, you couldn't shoot someone hiding there. And if you look at Saxe Huaman, there are actually no dead zones from adjoining walls. So wherever you stand here, you're going to be shot at. So this was built by people who knew the science of warfare, and they, there must have been a huge history behind this. There just must have been. But then we have to ask, why isn't it as good as this if Saxe Huaman 
it was built by a super civilization. What's going on? I mean, this what this is from the Netherlands, 1750. You see how elaborate and beautiful it is. Why does Sexaquaman look so much more primitive? Is it because it really is Stone Age? Well, I think yes and no. I think what's happened is Sexaquaman was built by the survivors of the super civilization. They still had knowledge of a few sciences like geopolymer, but they lost so much more. And they knew about warfare. Look, a war like this is built to deflect artillery because it's, it, nothing, is, nothing is perfectly straight. Everything is on an angle to everything. So, yeah, a war like this is just incredible. And, and you can see they were skilled in warfare. That's for sure. But this was built by the survivors. They climbed the mountain. They wanted protection, both from high-tech armies in other lands, but also from low-tech people. Low-tech people who would come up the mountain and try and take, up, take over the fortress. So this was a post-apocalyptic reality that the builders were living in. And again, this I don't know how this could have survived. It, it probably didn't. I'm guessing this was all rebuilt by archaeologists in the way they saw fit. I don't know how this could have worked, if it really was a calendar. I'm, I'm not sure. And again, you see lightning strikes would have affected other mountains, even Cuzco. These are, I, I guess, lightning conductors or something. So I, I'm not really sure what's going on or why this would have been vitrified by lightning, if that is what it is. Thanks.